by definition, military production output is not real wealth. Wars destroy wealth rather than creating it. There are a number of myths about the Great Depression which are very popular. The first is that Herbert Hoover was a do-nothing laissez-faire president who simply allowed unemployment to rise and was responsible for a total economic collapse. In fact, this is the opposite of the truth. Hoover was an extremely interventionist president and one of the main reasons why the Great Depression became so severe was because of the active and interventionist policy he followed. In particular, his refusal to allow asset values and wages to find a natural clearing level. The second myth is that the New Deal saved American capitalism and brought the Great Depression to an end. The historians generally do not believe this anymore. The fact is that in most parts of the world, the Great Depression began to end much, much earlier and much more quickly than it did in the United States. In Great Britain, the Great Depression was over by 1933, and Britain, in fact, enjoyed very rapid economic growth from 1931 onwards. In the United States, by contrast, not only does the Great Depression go on for more than a decade, it, in fact, actually gets worse. And by 1937, the level of unemployment in the United States is as high as it had been in 1932, but in addition, the federal government has built up an enormous debt. The third common myth is that what eventually ended the Depression and saved the economy was World War II. By definition, military production output is not real wealth. Wars destroy wealth rather than creating it. In fact, if you look at the figures for American economic activity and you strip out the war effects, as people like Robert Higgs have shown, what you can only conclude is that in fact the Great Depression does not really end until 1947 or 1948. Uh, and that the war simply conceals or covers up the continuing uh, low level of real wealth-creating economic activity in the United States.